To do their work, scientists of course need tools. The trouble is, their tools of the trade can be locked up by patents, for example, and access to them denied. So potentially life-saving innovations can be held back or indeed not made at all. Well, one man's on a mission to change all that and make the instruments of investigation freely available to all scientists. The method's known as open sourcing. Let's meet Richard Jefferson. Open source seems like something new, but it's not. For 4,000 years, all of civilization has been built on open source, but it wasn't with software. It was with plants. It was with animals. It was with agriculture. Let's say if we're breeding an apple, we can use someone else's really interesting apple, Granny Smith, Pink Lady, and we can cross it with our own apple to make yet a better apple. The core tools, the seeds, the germplasm, that's the genetics of it, uh, are shared with everybody. For Richard Jefferson, the sharing of scientific knowledge is his life's work. Unfortunately, in biotech, we don't have that concept yet. Richard believes that innovation in science is being held back by complex ownership of scientific tools. What about the very tools for tweaking genes or for transferring genes? Instead of being owned by multinationals, what if these tools were owned by the public? My molecular biology career started back in 74, and I was surrounded by enormously talented scientists, but more importantly, I was surrounded by an environment where every new discovery was being communicated by the telephone to, to anyone who would listen to it. I saw what an enormously seductive process it is to create tools and provide them to people. When I was at Cambridge in England in 1987, we were fortunate enough to plant what ended up becoming the first field trial of a genetically engineered food crop. What we were trying to do is understand how genes worked under field conditions. And to do that, we had to have a molecular stethoscope. So I developed a tool called GUS. GUS has become one of the most widely used molecular tools in plant genetics. GUS is simply a molecular marker. It's a gene that allows us to measure the behavior of another gene by putting it right next to it. On the back of the success of GUS, Richard set up a non-profit research institute that made all its discoveries available for public use. We wanted to provide a toolkit to allow many players to solve fundamental problems. One of their most exciting discoveries was a new method for transferring plant genes. Along with Gus, this engineering tool has been sent out to thousands of labs across the world under an open license. Turns out that DNA spotted onto a piece of paper, a letter, basically, just pop it in the post, the person gets it, they put their little buffer or, or solution on it, and they take the DNA out. We started sending out tens of thousands of these letters it turned out that just sending out the DNA isn't enough. We also had to work on whole new legal paradigms, new principles, new licenses, to make sure that we built a community. Discovering this legal minefield made Richard realize that scientists desperately needed a guide through the confusing world of patents which control the use of scientific tools. Basically what the patent system presents to us now is a thicket, a thicket of of conflicting rights that are not clear. It's not clear who owns, what value they have. Let's take the example of golden rice. It's been widely heralded as a potential biotech revolution to save children from a vitamin A deficiency. It's a terrific technological contribution, and it's been held back for many years because of intellectual property, regulations, fear of litigation, and general uncertainty of a way forward in society. Richard developed a way of searching for patents called Patent Lens. This has become the most prominent free patent search tool available, listing and explaining over 9 million patents. Now he has a new goal in sight. With a move to the Queensland University of Technology and backing from the Gates Foundation, he wants to crack open the codes to green energy. We're going to be working in Brisbane with another fine Australian scientist, Ben Hankimer. 
we're going to set up a worldwide Apollo project to engineer and make available to the worldwide community strains of algae. Algae that can grow on the water we reject, salty, brackish water, on the land we cannot cultivate, non-arable land, desert land, using the one resource we all have, sunshine, to produce the one perfect pure fuel, hydrogen. If we can use molecular biology to finally understand the fabric of life, to create tools to help us figure things out, what a powerful intervention that would be.